Um, thank you for coming um, to this Sustainable Lifestyle Research Group seminar. I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Ian Black, who I met at a seminar in London a few months ago. Um, he's in the Department of Marketing at Harriet Watt University. Um, and he's going to talk today about two different studies, very different studies, um, but which he's bringing together to try and draw out bigger messages about the potential for consuming less. Thanks very much, Pete. Thanks very much. It's been, a, it's been a while since I've presented to such a large academic audience. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> In our conferences, if you get five or six people by the end of the uh, uh, on a Friday, you're doing well. So, um, please, um, I'm, I'm getting videoed here, but I'm I'm more, more of a sort of live person than a video person. So please ask questions as we're going. I'd, I'd much rather there's a bit of interaction uh, and, uh, uh, and I can clear up the confusion. I will no doubt cause rather than leaving it all to the end. Now. Uh, so, so, so please let's uh, feel, feel free to, to talk. So um, as, as Kate said, I'm at uh, Harriet Watt University. We, we met when I was at uh, Edinburgh University where um, some of this research was done and also um, previously to that, about seven years at the University of Sydney where the majority of, um, I guess, some other parts of this research was done. So this is sort of a global, um, global feel to, to it. You'll, you'll see, if you, if you look to the, the abstract that I've provided, um, I'm going to be, this, this overall theme of having, of consuming less but, but having the same, and I'm drawing uh, that from, from two very different studies. One from a sort of cognitive psychology perspective, uh, you know, a multiple two by two experimental t tradition, um, uh, looking at a very uh, specific type of scarcity. Um, in, in this instance, uh, it's, it's scarcity that's, um, uh, that, that we impose on people, so it's involuntary scarcity. Um, and then the second study um, that, that we'll get to is very much is a qualitative st uh, study, uh, far more from uh, the sort of ethnographic perspective. And I suppose there's a researcher I sit in, in the middle. Um, this was done with a colleague <coughs> of mine, uh, the, the top one, uh, Charles Arini, who is a cognitive psychologist. Um, um, and I can just about keep up with him and can help out with some of the design issues and you know, do a little bit of statistics, but nothing too complicated. And, and on this end, I uh, work with um, uh, 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 Helen Sharif, who's at um, uh, Griffiths, um, who's very much an, an ethnographer, the first, first degree in, uh, in, 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 uh, in French philosophy, or philosophy um, in, in France, who has a very different uh, mindset. So I sit in the, in the middle, um, partly because I kind of like to do different things, um, and uh, but also I'd like to sort of bring a whole different range of uh, perspectives to, to a particular uh, uh, to, to a context I find interesting. So what we are as I say, we're looking at is uh, two different ways uh, I've studied the, the uh, consumer scarcity. Um, the you know, why why is that sort of an, an important thing for us to, to be to be looking at? I'd like to sort of make that case over the next, next few slides. I'd also like to maybe just to pause in marketing. I'm a, in a marketing department, which causes me great embarrassment. I have to say, always, oh, I'm a marketer. Don't, don't look at me. Don't throw things at me. Um, and we, we know we are, we are blamed for a lot of the problems that we have. We are blamed, uh, quite rightly, for overconsumption, for the sexualizing of, of young girls, for eating too much, um, for you know, for a whole host of societal ills. But I'd kind of like to make the, the point that what we are, are really good at is just understanding the human being who happens to do a lot of consumption. And you have to consume. You know, try not eating and drinking for a while. You know, we do have to consume. Um, you know, we, uh, but what we're good at is understanding the human being and then being persuasive, getting you to change your behaviour. Maybe that behaviour is, you know, you don't want to be drinking that horrible old water out of, out of a tap. You know, you want this fantastic water that will give you vitality and health. You know, um, and then leads to environmental problems, as, as we all know. Um, or we can be using the skills of marketing to, as we have done very successfully in, in Britain and in Australia, and, uh, in stopping people smoke. You know, okay, so marketing was part of the problem, but it's also part of then been a very effective through social marketing, but been part of the solution. So I would kind of say I know that we are intellectually just one one raise up, as it was described to me, one 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 rung up higher than uh, than, than our history in the academic world. That's the way I've described it, Edinburgh to me. We were seen right down here, you know, the, the medics and the law school right up at the top. And, you know, but, you know, we, we can make you drink bottled water and pay more for it than a, than a cup of coffee. 
you know, that we, we're very, very good at uh, getting you to do things, and we need to change people's behaviour. We, you know, we know that. It's the, uh, we, we, dramatic changes to people's behaviour. So I would, I'm kind of making a, a, a plea for the, 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 to, to let us into the, um, into the discussions, um, because our skills can be good, used for good, and they can be used for evil. And, uh, and I'm hoping that, uh, that, they, that, that some of the other work that I, I try and do um, is, uh, is, is to try and balance that ledger out a little bit. But I think uh, the, the, the first quote that I've got, I've got up there is that, you know, despite all the, all the talk, um, all the rhetoric that comes out of the UN and all the rhetoric that comes out of the, you know, the greenest conservative government ever, um, that we're still moving away. You know, that's the quotes in 2009, but I, don't, I haven't seen anything that, to me, that changes that, uh, to, that, to that perspective. We are still getting further away from our task. Um, you know, I'm very, very proud of, uh, of what Scotland is able to do in terms of its carbon emissions and the goals it set itself. But you know, we're, uh, we're, uh, we're still, as a, uh, as, a, as, a, as a global population, moving away from sustainability. But much of the responsibility lies with the consumer. And down at the, the consumer, it is our choices, uh, our choices to live in certain places, to live in certain ways, to perform certain practices, uh, to consume or not to consume, and all the alternatives. Down at that individual and that household level, um, it's already well speaking, uh, having the, the, the government acts, and of course we need that, but the consumer is, is vital. So, but we are in a situation where we are, we've gone, for a number of reasons, going from these positions uh, of, uh, of absolute abundance. I, I did it up. One of our students came in to me two years ago as part of a test, as a, a, a traineeship for Tesco's, and said, "I've been given this data, this data problem. Tesco's, you can um, you can have 106 varieties of flour that is available at Tesco's, and they want to slim the number down a little bit, and they want to do a data and you know, do this as, as a data-driven thing. Jeez, 106 different. It's not to say that every Tesco store has 106 different flowers on it, but that's how many are available to me." Incredible abundance that, that, that we have, and whether that's in you know, uh, shoes or whether it's you know, as, as soon as a child is born, you know, this explosion of plastic that happens to us uh, in, in, the, in the house, which causes me great difficulty as a father of two young children. Uh, <laughs> constant war on plastic. You know, forget the war on terrorism. To me, it's a war on plastic, which I'm losing, much like the war on terrorism. Um, and then you know, clothing. So there's great ab abundance. Um, but you know, we know we're moving into times of scarcity, be it a coal town, um, be it um, the, 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 the wheat crops that, uh, I know we've got this 2010 there was an issue, 2012 there's been a, a real problem. I, I, I love this, I love it, I think it's an amazing photo. Does anyone know what this photo is? It's from Lester Brown, in, uh, Civilization of the Age. These, these are, um, uh, these are basic, basically, uh, 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 feed farms in the desert in Saudi Arabia, where they use fossil, um, you know, use their enormously cheap fossil fuels to pump up their, um, their, their aquifer for water, irrigate the desert, grow the fodder, and then the 37,000 cow um, uh, dairy farm that they had in Saudi Arabia until recently. It's just an insanely large uh, dairy farm, all done utter, utterly unsustainable. And they've run out of water, so that 37,000 uh, cow. cow um, Farm is shrinking, and they've gone from being an ex exporter of dairy products to an importer. And because they're rich, they can do that. You know, same for poor old Yemen, like, uh, just a couple of doors down, where uh, they don't have the money, and then they've got the problems that causes. But so we know that uh, it, uh, that we are in times of, of scarcity that hit hit us. In case we can make a little bit of money from our mobile phones, but uh, it's um, scarcity and abundance are clearly millennium development goal issues. And whether it's um, uh, Eradication of poverty, um, or the, um, the eradication of hunger on the, on the other side, that, 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 that balancing uh, issue. Um, and then, very importantly, I think, in for speaking to a sustainable development audience, that all our messages aren't they, to a large degree all about creating scarce, about having less than you might desire, you know, reduce. Um, I've had, I've come cutting down on my red meat. Buy nothing today. Let's you know, reduce our emissions of, uh, of carbon dioxide. This is the, 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 the one and only example of an organisation telling its customers not to buy its products. Uh, I guess, uh, uh, um, the, you know, on this, this particular day, um, the Patagonia brand, who have got a 
no, by no means perfect supply chain um, and uh, production of their, their goods, but they're, 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 they're trying hard, they're saying, you know, don't buy this, but it's, it's, um, it's all about scarcity, creating uh, scarcity in, in people's own, less than they would ordinarily want, less than the, the rest of the consumer um, uh, logic within society is telling us that we could consume. You know, for, for every every pound we spend on messages saying reduce, is that a thousand pounds, is that a hundred thousand pounds telling us to consume more? But, uh, but we, we, uh, we're trying to create a, a, a situation of scarcity and then the question that, for me that, that runs from that is then how are uh, how are, how are consumers going to, to respond to that? Because as you know, I'm sure you've all been victims of it in some way that creating a scarcity is a great way of, um, of stimulating demand. So Zara, as an a, a, a incredibly successful retail outlet, is, is ba business is based on very small numbers of clothing they make on each range. So you can't go in there and say, oh, well, I'll, I'll decide tomorrow. And they can say, well, it might not be there tomorrow. You've got to buy it now, create the scarcity, um, and, 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 st and stimulate. Um, uh, we were talk talking over lunch about it, um, uh, vanilla beans, vanilla vanilla pots. Uh, so was it your, was it your, no, your, your no. daughter? Have to go buy vanilla. There's a shortage of vanilla pots, so she's running outside out to buy vanilla pots. Just you know, stack up for them, but, but get, get them through those lean times by uh, uh, by, by having. Which I think I, I don't go into that today, but I think there is very much an environmentally, uh, envir sorry, evolutionary psychology perspective of why we do this, that uh, that why we hoard when there's a scarcity to get us through those lean times. And if we didn't do that, uh, we uh, may not necessarily have uh, survived the era of evolutionary adaptiveness. But for, so scarcity. So if we in the sustainable development community are saying to people consume less, we consume less than you desire. We've got to be very careful about that, that we don't then stimulate some sort, of, we don't then stimulate demand. And that by creating this, the, 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 the scarcity, we, we, uh, we, we create, create the demand from that. Um, so, that, and that's some of the other uh, issues that I'd, I'd like to sort of talk about later, uh, or doing towards the sort of recommendations stages today. Um, right, so, if that's the why I think this is an important topic within sustainable de uh, development. I'm going to now ex uh, exp explore two different studies that, uh, that I've done, looking at different types of scarcity, and uh, and, and then hopefully, you know, okay, there, there, I know that there are some conceptual issues within here that uh, that need unpacked, um, but uh, but I think the, the kind of overall message that they that they they, go, that they bring forward um, is uh, is an interesting one, and hopefully one that uh, I'll, I'll resonate with. So, first, first study, um, I've uh, swapped this round from the abstract, um, is what we, what we call, uh, what we call the, sort of the chocolate studies. They're a bit patronizingly within my department, it being known as the chocolate studies, um, because you know, we, we used uh, fine Belgian chocolates within the, uh, uh, as, as a stimulus within the, but how full I am, uh, sorry, how, how full am I? Well, that, that depends on how, how much I thought I was going to get. Um, or, or, or explore satiation um, as a, as a con concept in a, in a few minutes. But the overall research project here was, was, was aimed at trying to develop a theory of how satiation uh, and expectations of future consumption opportunities in, in, in the immediate future um, influence the, the enjoyment uh, in, in the, of the, the present consumption experience. So it's, it's bringing together a number of uh, streams of research. Um, and those, uh, we Whereas I'm concentrating today on scarcity, we've also looked at its flip side, the abundance, when you get a lot more uh, than, than you expect. You know, the, the buffet syndrome, almost, you know, you get a lot more than you expect, you don't enjoy it, you, you know, you, you, uh, you, you, we're wasteful. You know, why if you buy a bag of, sorry, a box of 48 packs of crisps to see you through, you know, the next six months, then you realise that you've done them within two weeks. <laughs> you know, so bulk buying is a, you know, might save us a little bit of money per pack, but uh, it doesn't doesn't work particularly well as a uh, as a tactic either for our, for our waistlines or our wallets or for the for the for the plant. Um, so the, one of the the, the issues uh, that we haven't yet fully w worked out is is the, the scarcity that we're talking about within these these, these pro the first products is and less than we expect. We, we create a, a, um, a scarcity by um, setting up an expectation of how much you're going to get 
and then we violate that expectation. So they expect something, they get less. Whereas the second um, study that we're, we're talking into is um, b b because the, the women have made a choice to consume less, um, but it's less than a desirable amount. So there's a, there's a, a little bit of ambiguity about the difference between the, the, the violation of the amount that you desire and the amount that you expect. So I'm, I kind of work between the two and say that the scarcity I'm talking about is less than the, uh, a, less than a desirable amount. Um, and because we're, some of the chocolate studies we're talking about that. A pleasurable experience, a, ple a pleasurable consumption experience. We kind of came to this, this topic, and uh, I think it's the best way to come to research topics, you know, on having a few beers on a Friday. Um, <laughs> uh, and we, th we, were, we were thinking it was you know, two, two dads and uh, one soon to be dad, and understand we've only got a certain amount of time <laughs> on a Friday night before we've got to get home. Um, and uh, we get down towards the end of the beer, etc., and, and then start to think about what, what happens when we anticipate future scarcity. And um, we came up with some various I um, ideas about uh, about this. Um, so, what happens when Penfold Grange is one of the world's great wines? It's an Australian wine that um, rivals uh, the, the finest in, in, in France uh, and, and, and Italy. Very, you know, hugely expensive. So, when you're getting down, you know, it's hundreds of dollars a bottle, when you're getting down to that last little bit. How do, you ex how do you consume in that situation? How do you consume that last run of the ski season? Is it different from the first one? Mm -hmm. Is it different from the one in the middle? You know, we'd, we'd say you know, the, the actual route you take might be exactly the same. It might get exactly the same speed, but what about the psychological response to that? Or because we were in Australia when we were doing it, and Charles mm -hmm. Arini is a surfer, that last wave of the day, just when it's getting a little bit too close to shock, shock attack time, and you can't really see the wave coming. Um, uh, the, the, just uh, getting out there and enjoying that, anticipating a future scarcity. This is coming. This is it. How do we then consume in those circumstances? So we sort of, in the conceptualisation, sort of trying to tie together three different, uh, three different research streams uh, here. The, the, the first one, and one of the most sort of basic principles of, uh, of, of consumption, is satiation. Is that we eventually we get full or we get bored. Um, and of course, there's a physical element to that. You know, there is so only so much chocolate that you can eat, <laughs> Just, despite what some people seem to think. Um, one of the things that was interesting throughout this, the, these chocolate studies that we've done is that people believe they can eat a hell of a lot more than they actually can. Um, but uh, but we, you know, the, the phys physical satiation, satiation um, uh, occurs. You know, the consumption quantity and physical. If you're very big, a very big stomach, you can get more in than somebody who's very small. But there's an enormous number of things that we can play around with um, on a, 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 a psychological perspective um, that can change the how, so, how, how it's a level of satiation that we, uh, that, we, that we feel. So that, I mean, that's, the, that's the kind of critical theoretical point for us here, that, um, that, that satiation rates can be changed. And then asking the question, is, is scarcity one of those, uh, say, uh, one of those, one of those uh, variables? So if you, for example, if they've done studies with people with um, memory problems, with, you know, with only, only short term memory, it's a little bit cruel. Um, give, give them a, a, a good feed, um, get them to um, tell how full they are, and then because they've got a memory problem, they forgot they've eaten, and then mm -hmm. give them another meal, yeah. and, uh, and you keep coming up with the same, right, approximately the same level of fullness. <laughs> so there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, how much do I remember eating is, 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 is important as well as uh, how much do I feel my, my belt is now a little bit tighter. Um, but there are you know, huge numbers of ways that we can manipulate you know, the social norms, what's the, the right amount to eat in this situation, what, how am I being in, in, encouraged, how easy the consumption is. So this talks of work that's done with, you know, the, uh, if, if we're working with um, so it's, 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 it's easy. Um, if we put lots of bean uh, um, M&Ms in a bowl and make it easy for people to eat, they'll just keep on eating, big bowl to eat. If all of a sudden you put them into smaller bags, the consumption isn't easy, is easy, and we've got to open all that effort of actually opening up the bag to eat it, then we've become fuller quicker. So this is why big jumble bags like that are really not a very good idea, because it's too easy for us just to, uh, to, to throw things down our, our, our small pack sizes do give us that moment to reflect, to go, do I really need my third pack here, or the second pack? No, I've probably had enough and I'm, I'm actually quite full. Okay, so but there's, a, there's a lot that can, can vary satiation rates, uh, uh, both physically and psycholog uh, psychologically. Um, uh, 
Another area, another stream that we that we looked at is the utility of current versus delayed consumption. Um, I like to call, call this the sort of uh, your favourite music effect. Um, that we, what we are uh, a given a given factor, um, we can we, we vary between our, our current self, the utility you can give our current self, versus the utility um, in the future. So your favourite music. I'm un unlike my wife, who can listen to her favourite song a thousand times, and tomorrow she'll be able to listen to it a thousand times again and never gets bored of it. I don't listen to my favourite music very often because if I do, I ruin it. You know, I, it, become, it becomes too familiar. I don't, the, those feelings, those emotions that are attached to it become, you know, essentially uh, uh, worn out. Um, so what I'll do is I'm essentially trading off current utility uh, for future utility. So instead of listening to my, my favourite song next for the second time, which I know I will enjoy, I'll think, well, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the future I'll destroy this so I will have a poorer consumption experience now, less utility now, so I can enjoy the future. So there's a trade-off between your current and your future self. Uh, so the, 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 we, we, and there's often people thought of as an antagonistic uh, respect within that, that if you, uh, you, you gain now to lose later, or you lose now to gain later, that the two selves don't work particularly closely. And we've, the, the beer drinking, surfing, um, skiing kind of analogy brought us to the idea that savouring is the, essentially um, the mechanism uh, by which the, uh, uh, the, the, the unites um, uh, the, the unites these two other, other streams. So savouring um, this this heightened awareness that makes us fully conscious of those pleasurable things, you know, the hear, the smell, and that we're able to take far greater utility from something. So the last chocolate in a box, you know, your pleasurable experience, being able to really you know, enjoy that. There's a way it melts in to your mouth. Really being able to take care of picking out the flavours, etc. Um, that, that this, uh, that this, this, uh, this ability to get more utility per, uh, per, per unit of consumption uh, is, uh, is, is a sort of central point to, to, to what, we were, uh, what, we're looking, what we're looking at. So, um, the, the, so the, the establishing the relationship between these three, three research streams was the it's kind of the main point of the. Uh, First uh, of, the, of the, the, uh, the first study, and then the, the mm. second and third study. I'm only telling you about two today. So, study one is the relationship between uh, exploring the relationship between scarcity, savoury, uh, and satiation. Um, and it's a, a chocolate study. I'll go into the procedure in a, middle, uh, in a minute. But essentially, the, the, the main hypothesis is that if, if those who are told before they, they are eating that they will receive only two of six, i.e., that the scarcity is signalled to them. Okay, they've got an expe expectation they're going to have a certain amount. Then they're told they're going to get less than that. Then they will have the ability to save. Then they'll realise, oh, I'm getting a lot less than I want, less than I, uh, less than I expect. Therefore, I'm going to take longer to consume them. I'm going to uh, get more, uh, uh, more taste from it. We thought that they might be able to lay down better memories of it, but that, that didn't work. Um, I think more because memories are a really tricky thing to get to, and we've failed in actually isolating that. That's a sort of an area. Um, that we, we need to move on. But um, if you signal the scarcity beforehand, they will eat more slowly, they'll be more satiated, um, and they will desire a few additional pieces. They will be fuller um, from the same unit of consumption. Um, the independent variable is when the, was the scarcity signaled um, before the consumption started or after. Um, and uh, the, the, the dependent variables the measured uh, eating time um, measured, in, measured in seconds, um, and uh, uh, whereas the other um, measured, measured on a, uh, a question at the end. So essentially what happened is that the subject would come into the room and they'd be set up a plate with um, six high quality Belgian chocolates on the, uh, on the plate. They'd be um, sat down, we would go through the usual procedures of uh, <coughs> I'm having a bit of a, a, a post-lunch uh, come down. Uh, uh, ethics procedures, that's the chance. Uh, we got them to you know, participate information sheet, etc. And then we, uh, uh, we, we told them that they'd be eating, eating chocolate today, they'd be eating them one at a time, um, and that rather than me sit in the room and stare at you while you're eating a little bit of chocolate, I'm going to put one on a tasting plate for you, and I'm going to leave, and I'll come back in two or three minutes and, um, and see how you got on. So they're sitting there with six chocolates in front of them, been told they're going to eat them one at a time. So we're trying to hit, hit, uh, establish a fairly hard expectation 
that they're going to be getting uh, a reasonable number of those. And obviously we'd measure that expectation as a manipulation, uh, a manipulation check. And most people thought um, that they would be getting the, the full six. So um, the, 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 there they're, they're sitting in front of the, 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 the chocolates. The first, the, the signal group are told before they started that you will only be getting two. The other four chocolates are for the next people, the, the, ne the next subjects, and we don't always have time to go upstairs to the fridge to get them. Um, and that, you know, that's why. So there's a cover story that kind of worked. Um, we would then leave, come back here, we said to them two or three minutes because if we told them exactly, then there would be an expectation of how long you would be expected to eat, and uh, uh, and uh, you know they would fill that time in. So we done some pre-testing that nobody took more than three minutes to eat one of these chocolates. Uh, so as I, as I, I might want to have time to show you today, we've, we've done some analysis. That, so we did some additional moderator analysis by examining the videos of people eating, and people would take twelve bites of a piece of chocolate like that, tiny little bites. Yeah. Tiny little bites, and when you're doing a video analysis of it and stuff, can you just hurry up? <laughs> I, and I've got spreadsheets so long that I couldn't actually get them all onto one spot. I've got six separate spreadsheets because there's, there's so many rows in them. And these buggers who would eat 12, they're 12 bites. <laughs> um, mainly Chinese women, interestingly enough. I don't know what it is, it was mainly the, 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 the small Chinese and, uh, women who uh, would eat, eat in that way. Anyway, we, we'd show them, they would eat the first chocolate, you'd come back in, you'd then uh, give them the second chocolate, uh, uh, leave. And for the non-signal group, at that point, you then told them, oh, they, these aren't for you. Um, these are for, for other people. So either before or after they've had the two, then we'd um, uh, hand them the, uh, 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 a quick questionnaire measuring you know, the level of satiation, um, how many more chocolates they desired, yes. um, how many uh, chocolates they thought they were going to get when they last ate, you know, and, and a few potential moderators of, uh, of that sort. Um, and, and what we what we found is those anticipating the, the, the scarcity, when you combine the tasting time over both pieces, um, uh, were ate more slowly. We didn't see the effect on the on the first piece, and this, this is one of the difficulties. We're, we're looking at satiation effects here with really small amounts of food, so, you know, so the, 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 the effect must be pretty big to be able to be caught, um, to be able to uh, uh, manipulate how full you are when you're just eating a couple of bits of chocolate. And I know they can, Belgian chocolate can be filling, but it's not that filling. Uh, um, so we <laughs> so the, the, found that they, when, we, when we look at both um, uh, piece one and piece two, the tasting time, uh, they, they, they eat more slowly. Um, they were fully, they could, fuller, their capacity for additional pieces was less, and they had less desire for those additional pieces. So we, we thought we uh, so we're off to a good start with that one. Um, Then had to move on to, to uh, uh, experiment two, where we we weren't really sure whether it made this differentiation between is it violating an expectation um, or is it violating uh, a desire that was really driving this effect. So we wanted to to, to tease those two things out, and we also wanted to bring in uh, abundance. Um, and so in, the, in that in that instance, giving people a lot more than they thought they were going to going to to, 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 to get with the idea that if you have time um, to think, to, to understand that you've, you've got an abundance, you can vary your the way you eat in order to deal with it. Whereas if you don't understand, know the abundance is coming, you'll eat in a normal way and be, be, be fuller uh, uh, faster. Yeah. Um, so, um, essentially the same, uh, same procedure, just a little bit more complicated. So uh, were they told um, either about the scarcity of the abundance before they started eating, or after the second, uh, the, the, the second or sixth piece, so that, that should be done after the sixth piece as well, because um, in the abundance conditions they could be asked to eat six. Um, and interestingly, if they hadn't been told about um, the, the abundance and they just kept on getting pieces and they were eating uh, too quickly, a lot of them stopped. On. I'll explain that a little bit more later. Um, <coughs> So how many chocolates do they want and uh, do they desire and want? And they, these were measured before the plate of chocolates were, were brought in. Um, so we just showed them an individual piece of the chocolate rather than the full full plate, um, rather because we didn't want the expectations set up and uh, beforehand. Um, so we, we measured that before. Then overall tasting time done on video this uh, time, so it was a little bit of a tighter measurement. Was the, the previous measurement was where they were told. And once you start to eat the chocolate, ring a bell, and when you finish, ring a bell. So it was a bit of a mucky, a bit of a, 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 a poor, poor measurement of, uh, of 
videoing. Oh, I've toying the ethics committee said that we weren't allowed to video people eating chocolates too. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas Edinburgh was a little bit more lax than Sydney for some reason in, 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 the, East, in the East terms. And then capacity for additional pieces, the number of pieces eaten. We, um, we found it really easy to recruit for this study. In the, in the 151 <laughs> students, we, we, you know, we, we rocketed through this. We gave them a, um, five pounds as well. So five pounds plus lots of chocolate. It wasn't a difficult study to get people to come along to. Um, so there's the, a far more complicated d design because we've got uh, four different conditions here and we'll go, I'll go through them in, in, individually. Okay, so the, the scarcity condition is exactly the same as, as study one. They expect six. When they come in the room, they see six. And they're either told uh, before or after that they're going to receive two. So it's exactly the same as, uh, as study one. Then a control condition where they came in, saw six, and were eaten six. Okay, and in that instance, uh, uh, they, 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 were, they were told they were going to get sick, so they, they were able to adjust and, um, and, and got through most of it. In the abundance conditions, they came in and saw two, so we just swapped that around. There's only two in the plate when they, they came forward, and then they were told either bef uh, before they'd started eating or after they'd finished um, that, uh, uh, that they were, they were going to get six. So the people who had seen two were able to think, well, I better eat at a rate that I can get all six of these eaten, whereas the uh, the, the other group didn't know how many they were getting, and uh, expected to get too, uh, far too much over in the first two, if you see them. You know, they them uh, taking too much pleasure from them, and then when all of a sudden you're putting more and more on the plate, mm. oh, and she, she should have seen some of the faces of people who were trying to force feed them high quality Belgian chocolate, it's as though you were sort of breaking their arm, twitchy, fidgeting, walking around. <laughs> Uh, not another piece. You know, it was it was quite remarkable you know, how uncomfortable people people became eating over what was a 20, 25 minute period six bits of chocolate. How many of those pieces? Uh, these are um, <laughs> about 30, um, 15 grams worth. We, we measured them about 15 grams worth, and we got them from Leonides, who are a, a Belgian chocolatier. You can. You, know, you can find them in House of Fraser, etc. So they're, they're the real deal in terms of chocolate. You know, they're, they're not good for your waistline. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they're made with all the good stuff. I might have missed this, but uh, did you say why it was six and two? And why, how was this? this oh, how do we? No, it's a uh, Good point. No, pre, 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 the pre testing. Um, uh, the, 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 the pre testing amount that six was really where people really couldn't get eating it much, yeah, much, almost much 100 more. grams of chocolate. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot in there. Yeah. I mean, I know yeah. when you've got a big bar of dairy milk on a yeah. Friday evening and you're not paying attention, you can, you you can scoop yeah. a, a lot of it away. Um, but when you were, when we were pre testing with, with, with that amount, you know, we spent a lot of t time um, over you know, whether it had to be more than one. To, to, to create it, but uh, the, 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 the two and six split seem to, to work with the, the pretest. Um, so that, that was the, the, the uh, abundance uh, you know, conditions. The, I suppose the, the, the additional difference there was that when they first came in the room, there was, there was nothing there. We didn't see the chocolates to start with. What we, they, we sat down in the bare room and we showed them the individual chocolate, a version of these in a box. And how many of these do you think that you want to eat? How many of these do you think you can eat? Because if we'd put all six down there and have given them an idea, we <coughs> would have set the expectation before them. So we, would, we said to them, because they're very high quality chocolates, they've got to be kept in a fridge. How many of these do you think you like? I better now go and get them from the fridge and we'll, we'll, start, the, um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start the experiment. So um, what, did we, what did we find? And then, um, and then a control, t control condition of uh, expect to uh, receive to. So what, what did we find? We found the, the same, uh, uh, essentially the, the same findings as for the, uh, uh, in the scarcity conditions. Um, study one, so replicated signaling scarcity before the, the group, uh, before eating, so you ate more slowly and became more satiated. We also found uh, the flip side of that. Um, Um, the flip side that if, we, if you signal abundance, um, then they'll eat more quickly and become more satiated. Uh, so, uh, and become satiated more, more slowly. So that's the, the huge uh, you know, pot of popcorn not paying attention. That we are able to eat a lot um, by taking our, uh, our attention away from it. It's anti-savoring. If any of you can come up with a word 
That's the opposite of savouring. You would save, you know, you'd have done something we've not been able to. We'd love to be able to say what the, the, the other side of savouring is they're not paying attention to the food. Bolting. Uh, Bolting. Bolting. <laughs> Bolting the experience of the food. Um, we also then were able to dis um, distinguish between um, expectations and desires, and I'm just noticing time without going into enormous detail uh, on it, that it is essentially um, it was the violation of expectation that on the balance we thought was the, uh, was the explanation, de desire, uh, de um, uh, there were you know, fewer effects that we found there. So it's ex essentially the violation of, the, of expectation. So where does this sort of leave us in terms, because as, as Kate's very, very kindly pointing out uh, you know, uh, before, and it's a very narrow context for a sustainable develop, uh, d development uh, d talk, so I know, I know I'm, I'm sort of generalising well beyond where the, the, the science would allow me, allow me to, but I think when, when I'm combining this with the, this, the, the results from the other study, uh, hopefully it will uh, allow me to do that. But what, what does this help us, uh, uh, help us understand? Um, okay, the, the, the warning. Uh, warning that you will get less um, means you're going to eat more slowly and you consume more per unit of consumption and you're more satiated. So that's going to come with quite good news from a, of an environmental perspective that you, by doing something with people's minds, by giving them the right instructions, they can get more from the same amount of stuff. Okay, that, that's quite a, quite a positive message uh, from there. But uh, it has to be done in the, in, in, in the right way. Um, Otherwise, you signal the, the, uh, the scarcity that leads to good consumption. So you've got to give them the, um, the, the instructions embedded within the communications to take the time, yeah. just to enjoy, relax. Because you know, if, uh, if you just say that there's a, a shortage of something, then we run out and buy vanilla pods. Um, instead of really taking those vanilla pods we already have and enjoying them, not wasting them, and uh, etc. What we also see there from a theoretical side of things is that, that we see the future, the present and the future selves um, are cooperating uh, to, to, together, that uh, um, the, 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 the future self, the, 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 the present self is able to, to, to take lots of additional uh, utility um, and it uh, meaning that the, the future self is also, is, the future self is full um, when it wasn't thinking, when we didn't think it was going to be. There's a scarcity, I'm not going to have as much in the future, I'm not going to be as full in the future. Well, the, the present self changes the way it acts so that you are as full in the future. So there's a cooperation between the two. And then, um, trying to link uh, these three streams of, uh, of research, we're, you know, I, 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 my, my uh, publishing strategy is always to get rejected a couple of times, ne never give it away. Mm -hmm. um, but the trouble is that you know, so we're, we're still trying it in um, psychological science. As a, uh, very high-ranking psychology uh, journal, but if we don't hit there, we'll you know, hit somewhere. <laughs> well, if I end up in what, do you guys still get obsessed with the three stars and the four stars? Is that the sort of rhetoric around here? Yeah, if I end up in a three star, then great, but I'm gonna, we're, trying, we're trying for the four with, with this. So we're, we're working this, 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 this through the, um, the, the, uh, the, the review process. Okay. Um, there's more practical size, it, uh, practical recommendations. It, it allows us to talk to about uh, portion sizes and pa packaging and how to, uh, communications um, that, that firms can can, uh, can protect their, can themselves and protect their consumers from uh, having to provide them less. We're getting them to have more um, from the same uh, the same amount, um, and then so sort of giving these these indications of how to how to sell um, in times of, uh, of scarcity. Um, so one of the things I probably asked, uh, sorry, because I didn't turn the slides in ocean. One of the things I didn't mention to you there is that uh, we've got this. This is the sort of um, the, the the analysis that we've done currently. We've also got a huge number of moderators that we're working through uh, in terms of the number of bites that they took. So we just we've got good time and how full they are. They are um, it's, it's dependent variables at the moment. But we've also taken um, a huge number of moderators, such as. The visual inspection time, uh, the number of flights they took, the number of chews they took, um, the, whether they looked at it while they were while they were eating it, the bit that was remaining, did they smell it? So all these other savouring moderators that, that might find it, uh, something additional, uh, some some additional uh, relationships. But at the moment, we've got these sort of uh, uh, more more bare facts with more to come. But it was uh, three months of my life staring at people eating chocolate that I'll never get back. Uh, 
um, I'm really getting very annoyed at small Chinese women taking inordinate amounts of times and bites uh, to, to, to eat one, one piece of chocolate. Um, right, so um, I think the, you know, the, 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 the contribution there is that, you know, that we, we, can, we can, through our communications, through our, uh, uh, the, the, the way that we, we talk to consumers, the way that we get governments to talk to, the, to uh, citizens or the ugly fact that we're subjects in this country, um, that we can, we can um, allow people, uh, help people get more from the same amount of, uh, uh, of good that they are uh, able to, to, to be as full, to, to have enjoyed it as much as whether you had two, whether you had six, whether you had a small bar of dairy milk, or whether you had a, a, a much larger uh, bar of dairy milk. So as the scarcity is driven through society through economic, for economic reasons, um, because of availability reasons, that it's not uh, that that, uh, that is not as, uh, as a negative a message as, as people might think, uh, uh, having less. Okay. Um, questions? Can I, can I give you just sort of five minutes? Five minutes. So what I'm going to yeah, what I'm going to do the the something for the, the the next one. I wasn't quite sure if I'd get all the way uh, all the way through this. Is um, just highlight. Um, some, highlight some work we did, uh, and we'll just come through to, to this this, uh, this slide here. Highlight work we work did a very different perspective where we did uh, a qualitative piece of uh, research with a, a, a sample based in, uh, in Sydney and, and a sample, uh, sample of mothers in both in Sydney and, and, and Toronto who had for for various reasons, typically around the birth of the first child or a second, uh, a, a second child, have made a conscious decision to live more sustainable lives. Um, we did in-home interviews uh, with, with, with seven, 17 of them, um, depth interviews lasting sort of an hour to, to, to a, a, a 30 minutes. And one of the things that, that really struck us um, with, uh, within, within, this, within the, the, this work was, um, first of all, First of all, they wanted to change, but they only wanted to change um, within the consumer's paradigm. They were quite happy being mothers, quite happy uh, 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 being um, citizens. They did not want in any way uh, to become uh, environmental activists, to, to become uh, tree huggers, to, to become anything in, in any way that was, that was radical. They wanted to change, but they wanted to change within the consumer's paradigm, which is a little bit of a, of a, of a, con a concern. The, Another thing that we really found th through them was this, this, this incredible identity conflict that, 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 that drove their, uh, their everyday lives. So they had been a, you know, a, a school teacher, um, a, a corporate lawyer, um, run their own business. They had their, their individual identity, and then as mothers, they felt their entire lives were, were spent conflicting with conflicting identities and conflicting roles. If I was being a good mother, I was being a bad sister. If I was being a, a good sister, I was maybe neglecting uh, my, 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 my children a little bit, or I was, certainly wasn't the the, the, uh, the, the corporate uh, shark that I was, I was previously. A lot of identity conflicts that were going on uh, with, with, within their activities. And when we looked to see how that, that uh, the, the, the theoretical framework of, of conflict, of identity conflict, um, helped us try to explain some really inconsistent behaviour in terms of the practices and behaviours uh, and sustainable behaviours they decided that they choose. This lot of um, set of women were really uh, did a lot of quite radical behaviours. They would, uh, in terms of sustainability, they would, um, they, you know, they, they, they would, for example, they would mix their own um, uh, in, insecticide. They would use public transport in Toronto during the winter. That was, you know, was incredibly difficult to do, and incredibly uh, cold. There was one woman in Toronto using an old bin um, as a uh, as a, as a rain barrel. It doesn't make any sense in Toronto. The water is abundant, it falls from the sky regularly, etc. It's fine in Sydney. But, you know, but so they, they took on a, a, a large number of behaviours that 20 years ago, um, 30 years ago, it seems really quite radical. Um, they, they, you would have been a bit of a greenie, you would have been a, a, a tree hugger. But they absolutely rejected um, uh, th that label. And then they would also reject, in some senses, far easier behaviour. And we're thinking, well, why are you? Mixing your own uh, insecticide, growing your own vegetables, walking when it's minus 15 degrees outside to use the uh, to use, use your car less, but you won't buy environmentally friendly washing powder. 
but you won't buy environmentally friendly cleaners. It doesn't make any sense. So what they, they, they did, <laughs> didn't, apparently didn't make any sense when we first looked at it. Um, but then when you started to look at, at their core identity in terms of here, their motherhood, the things that they would accept in these behaviours they would, they would accept in, as long as they didn't challenge that conceptualization of motherhood, it was accepted. So this one particular uh, uh, Toronto mom who made it in her own insecticides used um, uh, uh, public transport but would not use environmentally friendly dishwashing powder and um, environmentally cleaners because her motherhood was all about cleanliness and protecting her children. And these things didn't work as well. So therefore I'm going to reject that, uh, that, reject that for, 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 from you. Um, and so when you look at the, the marketing, we talk about the green gap. 30% of people who will tell you in a survey that they're going to buy your green alternative, and only 3% typically do, or your market share is down about 3%. One of those reasons for the, the barrier in, uh, in here is you're not understanding the, the identity and the role that they're performing um, mm -hmm. at, the, at the time of that purchase or the use of, uh, of those, those products. So just to... Um, I think maybe I'll, I'll just go through some of the, just to finish off, with a couple of minutes on it, um, to, to finish off some of the, dis, the discussion in here. Um, the, what we saw that these, these, these women, other, other things we saw these w women doing, was when there was a was conflict between their core and other identities, then uh, the, they negotiate uh, a, uh, a changes to these, these practices in a way that they maintain their self-image. So if they didn't have a, if they had not had a scarcity of a particular practice or a scarcity of a particular product that they didn't think was, was okay to buy anymore, they didn't buy as many clothes, they didn't buy as many shoes, they only had one car, etc. They maintained their self-image in some other way. But in marketing, we very much drive home this. There's reason for, for uh, purchase um, as possessions as part of your extended self. That I am what I consume. I am what I uh, can show the world. And so when they when you take those products away from them. They didn't just collapse as human beings or lesser individuals or saw themselves in any different way. No, they just found other ways of doing it. So they had scarcity, they had uh, less than a desirable amount, but ultimately it wasn't affecting them. They were managing themselves in, in, in such a way that they could still maintain those bits that were important to them, and that might have been a strong sense of motherhood, where clearly this was important, or motherhood um, in terms of feeding the children, um, or whether they were still holding on to part of being you know, a, a corporate lawyer or, or in, some, in some ways. So some of the, the, the phrases won't quite uh, make sense there because I've not been able to go through the, 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 the full um, uh, uh, theory. Um, so we saw them disposing and, and change and loss occurring without disposing or loss of meaning of the, uh, the actual practice. So again, doing the same with, uh, with, 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 with less. Um, they, they, they transferred these, uh, the, 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 the meaning of these uh, um, these practices or these consumptions to, to other products. Um, other, other things that we, that we can say, say from this, uh, that, that, we, that we saw that you have to sell sustainability on, on self-interest. There's no, there's no point, uh, for the, these women would, would, would practice uh, sustainable behaviours um, not only because they were concerned about the environment, they were concerned about the planet, they were very much concerned about the planet they were leaving behind for their children, but those charity appeals don't go far enough. You know, save the whales, save the gorillas, save the planet, etc. It's a charity appeal. Um, you need to sell them on self-interest as well, um, that, uh, that, that it tastes better, that it, um, you can still use it to demonstrate who you are to your, to your uh, you can use it in your, your, your symbolic, symbolic self-construction project, um, if you take it in that way. So there, there has to be some element of self-interest. Uh, okay. um, they're not sustainable consumers. Okay, the people who consume, the mothers who consume, don't try and turn them into to sustainable consumers. Consumption is just part of what you do. It's just something that we get on with life. Motherhood is far more important. Um, and then, so can I just? I know there's just a, a couple of things. This is really important. Don't try and turn people green. Okay. Um, what what um, you need to, I think we have to do is, is work with the, the, the definition of, of existing core identities. What you, to, the way to get people to become green is, is make sure that they see motherhood as an, an integral part of motherhood is, is being sustainable. That an integral part of being a business person is no longer slash and burn and kill and, you know, and, and make money. That doing it sustainably is a core thing. Because these are the bits that we hold on to as a, 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 a very, um, a, a very strong. And I think overall, 
Um, what I would just say that uh, gone through, I've gone through quite quickly. Um, but we, the fundamental pr premise on, on, on underlying marketing sustainability, living living with less, is that you know that we can make do. If we deliberately decide not to do those particular practices, then something else takes its place. If we deliberately decide not to uh, uh, to consume that particular product, to buy that product, then something else takes its place. Or on from the from the experimental side, if we, we, we create the scarcity and then uh, uh, violate their expectations, then our bodies and minds are able to drag more utility from those individual consumption experiences. So we can maybe assure, reassuring people, and this is sort of the grander narrative that I'm really getting to, is maybe that by consuming less, you know, we don't necessarily have less, and you know, we can do uh, we can do the same uh, with less. So, um, sort of a bit of a whiz bang uh, rush through the, the, the second study there. I hope I gave you a flavour of that. And, uh, and Thank you, that's really interesting. Thank you. Well, I've got five minutes or so. <laughs>